steal from an arcade, that's the ticket. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob, I'm the Cow Hat Librarian, and I've got a good one tonight. This one is High Score by Destiny Howell, and I, I flat out love this, folks. I did not expect to find it in the section of the children's department I did. For some odd reason, it was categorized in the sports stories, and it has absolutely nothing to do with sports. So I think there was just a minor mishap there, perhaps. At any rate, DJ is at a new school. He attended an old school and came up with a reason to transfer to his new school, the Fitz. And it's for the best. He ran with a group of kids who pulled various cons at his old school, and he was heavily, heavily involved. He can't get into a project or other situation where he doesn't think about this elaborate plan to make the best use of his resources and put his teammates in the best position for them all to succeed. Even something silly like a little group project. He thinks of ways to make it absolutely over the top and to extract every bit of effort he can from everyone and find a way that all their pieces will complement each other and he has to fight the urge and go with the flow because that's not him anymore. He's not doing cons anymore. He's out of the game. Which is a good thing, because the Fitz is a little bit of an odd school. Now, it has teachers, it has administration, it has student counselors, one of whom DJ sees and talks with about things. But it also has Lucky. Now, Lucky has a ridiculous amount of power over the student body. Right across the street from the school is a local ar arcade called Starcade, part of a chain. And it has games that produce tickets if you win or achieve a certain level of score. And you can trade the tickets in for prizes. Unlike most of those kinds of arcades in real life, where you try trade in a ridiculous number of tickets for crummy prizes, this arcade actually has good stuff. Game consoles and the like. So the tickets are practically a currency at the Fitz. And Lucky has a lot. His older brother gave him a whole bunch of tickets, and rumors abound about the exact number of his current holdings, and he uses them to maintain his position in the school. He runs Lucky Lotteries, where people buy in for a chance at a jackpot that nets him tons of extra tickets. He runs gaming tournaments that have an enormous prize, but require hundreds of tickets as a buy-in. And worst of all, he has the rocket boost. Some time ago, their school had a thing where students could sign up to praise someone over the PA in the morning announcements. That they'd have a nice message for them, a compliment for them, to sort of raise school spirit and raise morale. Well, when a student challenged Lucky, he had that student's name put on the Rocket Booster morning announcement. And immediately after, that student got pranked hard. And Lucky made it very clear that he had arranged for the announcement. And that pattern followed multiple times. And students know that if they cross Lucky or his second in command, Mariposa, they will be rocket boosted. And to protect themselves, other students at the school absolutely shun anyone who's been rocket boosted because they don't want to be a target for Lucky. So this is the school DJ is at. And it's going fine so far. He's staying out of the game. He's staying out of Lucky's way. Well, then it falls apart. Connor transfers to the school. And he was part of DJ's old crew. And he immediately starts asking DJ about the games there and what type of cons they could pull there and all these things. And DJ warns him about Lucky and to stay away from him. And Connor doesn't listen. He cheats in a gaming tournament run by Lucky and his second in command. And it's obvious cheating. 
and Lucky reaches out to DJ and gives him a choice. Either he can go do his thing and raise 100,000 tickets in just a few days, or Connor will get rocket boosted. So DJ is left to plan a heist. He doesn't have most of his old crew, he just has himself and Connor. And Connor is a little bit reckless, as shown by his approach to Lucky. But then he starts finding unexpected allies. A girl from the drama club, Audrey, is the perfect face for their operation. She shows that she can turn the waterworks on and off instantly, can get adults and authority figures to feel sorry for her and give her information and assistance she should not be getting. And they rope her in. There's another boy, a hulking brute named Monty, who just scares everyone in school because he's a monstrously big student. And when DJ and Connor approach him, they find out that, in fact, he's just a nice, quiet guy who wants people to hang out with. He just stays quiet and stays out of the way so he doesn't intimidate people and so that there aren't any problems. So they've got the intimidator, the enforcer. And so they have to pull off a heist to find a way to get 100,000 tickets from the Starcade in just a few short days. To make things trickier, DJ is playing it straight. He's not going to do it in a way that harms any of his classmates. So the question becomes, will his team come together in time? Can they find out enough about the Starcade to make their heist work? And can he save Connor from being rocket boosted? It was great. It reads like Howell mashed together the Great Green Heist, which I'm a huge fan of, if you've watched the, my video about that on this channel. Don't Care High by Gordon Corman. Lucky's power over the student body is very, very similar to Feldstein's from Don't Care High, where he was the locker baron and provided lockers to people in the school for a favor to be named later, usually in the form of food. But when he was crossed, he would enlist the entire student body to inconvenience the perpetrators until they came to their senses and apologized and made things right. And Lucky comes across as a more malicious version of Feldstein. And last but not least, the currency of the tickets feels a lot like Howell was a big fan of the classic 90s cartoon Recess, particularly the episode where TJ is absent briefly, and when he returns to school, he finds that everything is about Mon stickers. These stickers sold nearby with monsters on them, and they've become a currency for the school and are needed to do anything. And I'm guessing, but it feels like Howells put some names in here as a bit of an homage to some of these things. Recess had TJ Detweiler, this book's hero is a boy with similar initials, DJ. The Great Green Heist mentions a legendary event that Jackson Green was involved in called the Blitz at the Fitz. And, well, DJ attends a school now known as the Fitz. It feels like those two nods were deliberate by Howell, and I loved it. DJ is written as a really, really great character. He's clearly good at this con side of thing, and Howell did an amazing job writing that where even his plan for his group assignment was borderline brilliant and would have earned all of them sparkling grades. And it, it really shows how quickly he can come up with these things and how well he can execute a plan. The characters grabbing the grabbing Audrey and Monty the way that they did was fun. They were just outsiders who had a necessary skill set and were basically decent people. Having Connor come back into his life as a reminder of his past that he'd been trying to escape and DJ's reason for leaving the con game were all really well done. I liked it a lot. And if you like things like The Great Green Heist, I'd recommend this. Or if you've enjoyed any other heist-related books that you've come across for kids, this is another great one. If you've watched Ocean's Eleven and thought, gee, I thought my kids would love this story, but I'd like it in book form and something a little more tailored to their ages. This one was a lot of fun. And 
the resolution was pretty satisfying, so I recommend it, go borrow it from your local public library. Now with that said, it wasn't perfect. There are spoilers ahead because I have to talk about the deal breaker. The deal breaker is simply this. While it was relatively well written and understandable, Lucky's position seems a little over the top. The tickets as currency was a neat thing. I could see that happening. I could see a student with a lot of tickets having some extra pull at the school. But the extent to which he's feared by the student body and that there's never any repercussions from admin when the entire student body knows that he's behind the rocket boosters and that he's gambling at school and so on, that really surprises me. That his power there is so huge, but it's so one-dimensional, it feels like something should have happened to topple his game long before now. And in fact, at the end of the book, Obviously, DJ and his friends do pull off the heist, and I, I again have to give Howell credit for this. It was really well written because DJ was doing all this stuff to go through the heist how they planned, and then when it falls apart, you find out that, in fact, they'd faked a lot of it to keep people distracted while the others went through the back door of a bakery nearby to go look in the garbage. So it was very, very much in the vein of heist movies and stuff where it looks like they failed until the camera pans away to see that in fact it was a success. It was great. The final part where DJ is paying off Lucky but warning him to not mess with him because he knows a trick to win at games and he will win tons of tickets and give them away and just destroy the value of them in their school by causing ticket inflation, that it would take down Lucky's little empire. That was a really, really clever discussion, and it felt very, very realistic. If Lucky's power in that school is so dependent on those tickets, and DJ has a way to get a bunch and just give them away, it felt like a very real threat. And they'd already built up the idea that Lucky knew DJ could do things beyond an average student. So that was really, really one, well done too. And last but not least, Howell left the door open for a sequel in a very, very fun way in that the counselor DJ had been talking to comes to him for help because a student is getting into trouble with Lucky. I liked it. It took a lot of ingredients from books that I'm quite fond of and mixed them together in a very, very appealing way. The, the only other gripe I have is that, aside from the conventional heist side of things, where it looks like the heist is going south and then it's revealed that they did it, but a different way through the Artemis direction, it felt like there should have been a breakdown between the characters prior to that. That there should have been a personal breakdown between DJ and Audrey, or between DJ and Connor, or DJ and Monty, and that felt a little bit like it was missing, like there should have been something to break up their team for a little bit or cause them to lose trust in each other, and it just wasn't there. And it, for me, it felt like it was lacking a tiny bit as a result, but to be fair, an average reader reading this you know, someone in grade four or five-ish reading this, they probably won't notice. And they'll probably enjoy the heck out of it. So head to your local public library and go borrow it for that someone in your life. They won't regret it and neither will you. Now, while I'm speaking about public libraries, if by some chance you use and appreciate the services offered by your public library, why not take just one minute and tell the powers that be exactly that? Tell your mayor, tell your council members, tell your MP or MLA that you use and support your local public libraries. We're at a time where some public libraries aren't receiving adequate funding that will allow them to continue to improve the services and programs and materials they offer. And a few good words in the right ears might make a world of difference. And if by some chance you are a library staff member watching this, 
don't forget that watching my videos counts as professional development time. With that, thanks for listening to me, Gush. Thank you for taking a trip down memory lane to Don't Care High and Recess. By all means, please like, please subscribe, and please check back and see what else I have to talk about from the Cowhat Library. Thank you. Bye now.